Let's continue the car discussion and uh, bring it to an even bigger loser than AutoZone on the day. Neo is crashing. Mr. Tom White with me here in studio. Neo's down 16%. Yeah. <sighs> Jeez. That's what that's what happens when you have to raise capital and continue to do that. Well, why do people million expect dollars that? Like, well, why is it coming as a office? surprise? It's not a surprise. Uh, you know, some of the uh, stocks that uh, that are low priced like this have big short open interest in, in them. You know, they don't mind uh, this, but it's actually diluting the shares uh, quite a bit. Five hundred yeah. million dollars worth, and that's why you're seeing uh, the stock under some pain. Uh, you and European Commission's also. Uh, probed into subsidies given to some of the uh, the uh, EV makers in China. That's also a concern. But uh, I think the the down move today uh, and uh, so far this year is uh, on the capital raise. Uh, they're down 58 percent from year ago levels. You can see that right there on the chart. So under some pressure today. Not surprising when you dilute the shares. Uh, but you know what? Put volume was about four times normal daily average or six times normal daily average volume that we've seen over the last five trading sessions. So a lot of put buyers in there based on the fact the stock's going down, right? Yep. Uh, at the same time, call volume, still about four times normal daily average volume that we've seen over the last wow. week of trading. so they're eager to buy the dip. Yeah, some people are uh, sticking their neck out. And those are the trades that kind of stuck out to me. Yeah, you got okay. put buyers on that. But the one that stuck out to me was out in the November uh, weekly cycle, the nine strike calls. They're buying these uh, from the open, bought over 15,000 of them for an average debit of about a buck. So the break even for these traders about ten dollars to the upside. Now that's about sixteen percent higher, right? But we all know Neo is one of those stocks, low price. That sixteen percent is not much. You need you know what a buck forty to uh, for it to go higher from here. So yeah, some people uh, sticking their neck out and trying to buy this dip, and uh, you know who knows if it'll work out. Hopefully they won't have to raise more capital because that might put pressure on I mean, the stock. But uh, yeah. you know if you look at their you know, they release their monthly metrics as far as deliveries and production. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still increasing and still yeah, growing. Sure. Now Tesla's putting pressure on them. But they've had to them. make price cuts like everybody else. Yep. And that's probably part of the problem. BYD's had price cuts. Yeah. They're the leader over there. Tesla's number two. They've been cutting prices all year. So, yeah, uh, competitive pressures in uh, a slower growth type of China uh, has this uh, stock under pressure. Fisker recently did the same. You know, it's just this is where it's a, another one on the list of down moves for growth stocks lately to tell me the market didn't quite have its head right. You know, yeah. um, I am a, a believer of the composite man theory. Uh, you know, the composite man. The composite man theory is that you view the market as a composite, right? All the yeah. minds, men and women, of course, yeah. add up to one being. And so the logic here should have been pretty clear, which is that there's a company that's nascent and growing, mm -hmm. has to catch up with extreme competition, yeah. has debt, they don't yeah. want that, they want to be able to refinance it when possible. Right. They're going to need to pick up any extra cash they can when they're having to cut prices of their main product. Of course, note offerings should have been in the market's list of like high probability events. Oh, definitely. And we keep getting this. It started basically with Apple's story about yeah. China demand, got hit, you know, mm -hmm. like, okay, and then the story reversed, never bounced, Oracle earnings solid, crash. There's just a lot of stuff that shouldn't make these stocks necessarily go down, but right. they are. Right. And I think that's the market basically looking way too rich. Yeah, and uh, you look at a name like Carvana, you were just talking about with Seth uh, Bastrom from right. Wedbush. He yeah. raises price, or he keeps a neutral on the stock, but I mean, that that's that company should probably be raising capital while their stock price yeah. is where it is at yeah. this point. But that also reveals cracks in the balance sheet of the company, also. Indeed. So, yeah. All right, let's talk about cracks in Disney's um, plan. That's kind of another example too, which is like when the market hates you investing in the more reliable part of your business right now, right. the parks. The cruise is. Cruise lines are doing actually very well really right now. Really well, yeah. You know, and the market freaking out because they're going to invest in this instead of f lighting more money on fire on the streaming side. The streaming like, side, you know. yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Uh, you, you don't want to grasp hold of something that's new and it's got, you know, 200 million subscribers across all their platforms that you think that's going to be their growth engine when it's their bread and butter, which is, you know, they're investing $60 billion in aggregate over the next 10 year period for their parks and cruises. I think Bob Iker's making some tough decisions here. He's, 
he's basically called out to the street saying, hey, we're investing what makes us money where we act, actually have the ability to grow and not lose money on an investment. This is actually an investment to make them grow. I, I guess somebody said the aggregate amount that they're gonna spend on parks and cruises, they could build like seven different Disneylands with <laughs> this amount of money that they're, that they're spending. Uh, ben Watson. You know, yeah, is he uh, is he listening? Yeah, <laughs> but that I mean, they're investing in a portion of their business that's not losing money. That's still popular. So uh, that's not helping the stock today. It's down over three percent, down over five percent so far this year. Uh, and we saw some put buyers in there. Somebody thinking, hey, this isn't going to work out. Really short term positioning. And the key thing I think on this trade, Oliver was they were buying them right in the open. Uh, trader bought 10,000 of the September 22nd weekly, really short-term positioning here. Um, let's see, the 83 strike puts. They only paid a debit of about 80 cents for these. So that break even of 82.20 over the next three days, basically there right now, uh, already at that break even, uh, put volume, uh, you know, a little bit above normal, but we've seen some pretty heavy volumes in there recently. This stock traded $203 in March of 2021. A wow. year after the pandemic yeah. started, uh, and Been it's brutal. now yeah under 83 bucks a share. So yeah, somebody thinking that we're going to see some more weakness into the end of the week. Okay. That uh, laying out capital is not going to help them in the near term. By the way, just to be clear, when I say there's like events causing stocks to sell off that that quote unquote shouldn't, I'm not saying like go and buy the dips on these. I'm actually kind of saying the opposite, which is like it's a sign that the market's very weak. Yeah. You know, because again, this is the type of stuff that's going to pay off for Disney long term. It's right. Disney. People are psychotic about right. it. If they build mm -hmm. seven parks, people would go. Right. So, what if Disneyland they land Midwest? I, I would have. crush. Are you kidding I, me? I would have liked to have seen had they come out and said, hey, we're going to spend 30 billion on Disney Plus and expanding that and. Well, what, what the stock would have done I mean, it probably going into a money-losing side of their yeah, business. Yeah, that would have crashed even harder. Maybe. So basically right now it's just lose-lose for Disney. No matter what headline they put out, yeah. other than spinning stuff off and selling it like the ABC headline, market doesn't want to touch it, right. bears betting on deeper downside. Real right. fast, hit me with the AXP trade, American Express. Yeah, um, you know, they've got the, um, the bill that's going through, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau are going to lower late fees across right. the board. Right. That might be a headwind for, for this them. company. But the company reaffirmed their guidance uh, just a couple months ago. Uh, you know, they've got earnings on the 20th of October, so you got to take that into consideration. But somebody betting that uh, this thing's going to run out of more steam. Uh, only up about 7% this year. In the November 150 strike puts, you're gonna capture that earnings event on October uh, October 20th. Trade about 10,000 of the 150 strike puts for a debit of about 245 on these. So the break even 147.56. Over the next 59 days, you got some duration in this one, about 7% below the current share price in there with put volume about three times normal daily average volume. Only about 15,000 puts have traded on the day, so not a lot of massive volume in American Express on a daily basis. So to see a 10,000 lot coming in on the downside, expecting more weakness. And we got the holiday shopping season coming up. Uh, people are still traveling yeah. traveling internationally. This is the higher level consumer too. So oh, this yeah. is Tell me about interesting it. trade. I've heard there are some pretty high profile people with fresh corporate Amex applications out there. Don't know who those might be, but Did they will I? be buying Christmas presents on it. I promise, Lorraine. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it.